God bless you beautiful people on YouTube and Facebook. Blessing to your family that nothing happened to you guys last night. If you watch me, you got up in your right mind. That's enough to say, Lord, I thank you this morning. And we give honor to God this morning who is the head of my life, should be the head of your life because I don't think you know nobody that made the stars. You don't know no factor that made the moon. And you know how, no idea how the sun rises every morning and shine warm on the just and, and the unjust. So we give you glory this morning, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, I was on yesterday, we talked about the power of the tongue. And uh, I prayed to God last night about coming back to it and the relationships of a husband and wives. And like I said, this conversation we get ready to have is talking to the husband and wives that are married. Let me say that again. Husband and wives that are married. Christian going husband and wife that is married. Now the non-Christian husband and wife that don't do church or you do church on Easter and Mother's Day or you just go to church when you got a new outfit and new, new, new hair out, your hair do and your nails done. I'm not talking about them people. I'm not talking about if you're going to see the little cute guy on the drums. I'm, I'm not I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the, the Christians that go to the church every time the door is open. Know the pastor's nickname. That's who I'm talking about. And we was talking about yesterday about how the Christian people, uh, majority uh, through uh, percentage, have lost love inside of the home and supposed to be Christian people. And I just do uh, think that it's not because you, you can't love, it's because you just don't know how. And a lot of people think they know how, but I don't think the people, a lot of people know how. Now, the only reason I can talk about this is that after a decade, I think you can almost teach anything after a decade. If you've been a fool for 10 years, then you definitely should know how to be a fool. If, you, if you've been someone that inspired your life back up, you should know how to do that. Uh, so I have 15 years of marriage and I had to learn as a man that you have to number one want uh, you have to make sure that you understand what the Bible said that your body is no longer your body and her body is no longer her body and then as a man I had to learn how to get my self out the way and start listening to what God said about being loyal Helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, through to brave, clean, and reverent to your wife. You know what I mean? And, and put her on the pedestal, just not in front of God. Just put her that you, you, you're going to take care of her. And this is what you have to do. You have to send her flowers, on, on not on her anniversary, not on her birthday. Just an odd Tuesday where the world is quiet because ain't nobody doing it. And then you do it. Send her some roses. Send her some candy. I don't know what you have to do, but I done all of that with wife and I took care of it and the joy. When I learned to practice that and it just got to, I bought her seven pair of boots, uh, seven weeks in a row. I was trying to support a young man that had his little uh, shoe line. So that's what he did. Uh, drove around town and sold shoes and boots out of his car starting his business until he was getting on his feet and I supported him and my wife uh, loved boots summer and winter and I bought her seven pair of boots in, in seven weeks at eight weeks she said if you bring another boot in this house so that let me know she wasn't even a materialistic woman that wanted to have things and stuff I gotta have this I gotta have this I gotta be tattooed up I got so, and I'm not bashing none of that. I have no tattoos or no piercing. I don't know why God just never took me down that road that I wanted. Uh, or I had a desire for none of that. So, I got one tattoo. You see it. All brown. Hey, come on, somebody. Well, listen, we want to dive in here real quick on what we talked about yesterday. We'll be going to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 1 through 40. I don't think I'm going to read all that, but I'm going to read a lot of it because it's just so important because I'm trying to let the Christian people, Christian church going husband and wife, get busy in your bedroom. 
Come on. It's time. Because a lot of divorce is coming out because this is the part that makes the marriage start going sour. Listen, sweetie, let me tell you, sister, something. If you don't can't cook biscuits already and not making love to your husband, Sarah, across the road, she make biscuits and she don't mind. Okay, okay, this is what we're going to talk about today. Because I see so many times that when we be become married, and by me being married, that you can lose track of time. Got to get the kids to daycare. Grandmama need a fence paid, painted. Uh, George got diagnosed with cancer. Martha is sick with the COVID. George need a ride home. And can you take the kids to the daycare? Billy need to be picked up from the ball diamond. Did you give the dog some water? The goldfish ain't been fed in a month. All of this is going on in the household. And, and even with stuff that's going on now, God says, slow it down. I slow everything down. Breathe. Hasu. <sighs> Take your time. Anytime I waited for a mini blizzard the other day for 40 minutes, I waited for a blizzard. 40 minutes in a line. Two years ago, I would have, man, I went to Martin's and bought ice cream before I did that. But it's teaching us patience. Getting back with your loved ones. Talk to your wife. Love on your wife. Love on your husband. I missed the three parts yesterday, so I had to come back and give it. We talked about she should support you. That's what the wife do. She supports you. And that's what you have to do, sisters. You got to encourage a man. Baby. You carrying all that grocery in? Girl, yeah, my he out there, girl. He See, he hear that. That makes him get stronger. He bringing a Waller Miller on on top of his head. Two bags in his hand and a Waller Miller coming upstairs when you encourage him. That's what happens when you, as a woman, encourage your husband. He gets stronger. If he love you, you love him, he should get strong. It's all set up. God made our DNA to come together. And be as one. Compliment each other. Number two. Her body speaks peace to yours. Oh my God. Your body is supposed to speak peace to him. When he see you. Oh look at what I got. Look what God has blessed me with. Uh, mm -mm. Baby you have to look back at him sometime. You know how y'all do. Look back and say baby you like, you like this? I ain't going to get no help. Ain't nobody going to help me out there. Y'all got me all out here by myself like y'all know that I'm not telling the truth. You got to make it happen. Come on, somebody. You used to do it at the street light. I bet we can do this before it turned green again. Come on. We only got five minutes. Here come mama. Come on. We did it everywhere. In the garage, under the balcony, on, on the tub, uh, in the toilet. Uh, uh, in the garage, behind Little George uh, uh, Meat Market. I don't know where you did it at. Down by the creek. And then we get saved. Oh, no. I don't do that anymore. You did it when you was dating him. He want that same thing you done to him when y'all was dating. When you was trying to get him, you did a little sum of everything to get him. Wives, don't let that stop. Husbands, don't let that stop. You are a big, this is getting married is one big date. You date all the time. See, you make arrangements when you girlfriend and boys, man. Hey, what you doing next Saturday? Yeah, I'll be back in town. You want to go on a date? Yeah, that's what you do when you're dating. That's dating. Husband and wife is a big date all the time. Wife come in there and say, sweetie. I know what the scripture said. My body is no longer my body and your body is no longer yours. And my body feel like having sex. Your body is supposed to say, well, we all are one. If your body want to have sex, mm, my body want to have sex. Now, now to you, let's look at me, seem like it's funny. But watch this. If my nose want to itch right now and my hand tell me that I'm not going to scratch it, I got a problem. If my elbow and my hands is arguing and my elbow tell me I'm not going to raise up to that nose and my hands say I'm not either, I got a problem. Because why? My body is one. 
I'm supposed to be able to control my body. If my body said eyes shut down because it got an attitude with ears, I'd be sitting on here like this. I can't hear you. And I can't hear what I'm saying. See, the, the, he, the, he says it in the text. Your body is no longer your body. Why? Bible says this. You leave your husband and wife and cleave to who? Your, excuse me. Leave your mother and father and cleave to your husband and wife. Leave your mama and your daddy. All these people out there that's all in your Kool-Aid. All in your business. Leave them and cleave to your husband and your wife. You all have become what? One. Your, your intercourse makes you one. And to awaken what? Human being. Be fruitful and multiply. He said your body is no longer your body. Because if, you, if his body want to do something with your body, then you have to submit your body as no longer have power, authority over to say no. It got to come subject to him wanting to have something to do with your body. And the same with him. If not, it says be be uh, uh, Krishna enough. Baby, I got a little stomach ache. I know you want to do it tonight, baby, but can we do it tomorrow? Yeah, baby, let's do it tomorrow. That'll be fine, sweetie. I'm going to go in there and read the newspaper, and I'm going to go in there. Do we need to pray? No, sweetie, we're strong enough. We don't ain't no devil getting in between you and me and you. I love you. And this is what the text is saying. It's saying that when you disagree to come to it, don't deprive each other. You ain't get, I bet you won't get no more of this. You can't say that as a wife. No, I don't feel like doing that. You can't say that as a husband. And let me give you a, shh, don't tell nobody, women. There's a way you can kiss a man and you can tell whether he love you or not. Your husband, if he kiss you and you don't feel it, you got to check him. There's 54 scriptures in the Bible that talks about kisses and hugs. If your man don't want to hold your hand, sister, something is wrong. And if he don't want to never kiss you, I'm talking about, baby, give me a kiss. No, 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 no. No, kiss me. What do you mean, girl? I always kiss you. No, 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 no baby, I'm not talking about that. Kiss me, baby. Kiss me like you kissed me when we was dating. When you, was, when you weren't sure you was going to get any. And you kissed me and I could feel everything in. When the last time have you guys kissed? Come on, church folks. When the last time have you let a real nasty sloppy one on your husband? I'm going to get in trouble. I already know it. Come on. When the last time you've done that? Are you so churchy that your husband don't even go to church with you because you stuck somewhere that you know you shouldn't be stuck? How do a husband not want to support a wife that's going to church? How do a wife not want to support a husband that's trying to get his life right with God? How do you women not want a man to love the Lord? Because when the Lord do, he beats us up as men. First, he incarcerates most men. Everybody in the Bible went to jail, including Jesus Christ. So if, it, if I just give a little tip to the people that's in jail watching me, let me get a little closer. It ain't over. And just when you think it over, you serve sure God. He'll show. I don't care if you got life. You can write a book that'd be a bestseller that'll still help your family. I ain't gonna get no help. What the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for steal your good. So get off of that. You went to jail. You can't make it. Everybody look at you crazy. The heck with people anyway. People gonna look if you help nuns across the street every day, and that was your job for four hours. All you did is help nuns and little old ladies cross the street. There's some fool gonna come on this air and say, "Oh, uh, he must be doing." It. He must trying to be filling on them old lady. He must be trying to get some money out of them. He must be trying to do this. He must, it's always somebody going to always say that you're not right when you're trying to do right. Is that right? That's right. I love you all. I blessings to all of you. But I just want to get down deep in this and I want to go in just a little bit deeper. I was getting ready to get off here. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 40. Let me read the majority of this so we can dive right in there. Now concerning the matter about which you wrote, 
it is good for a man not to have sexual relation with a woman. But because of the temptation of sexual immoralities, each man should have his own wife. Here we go. This is the rules, people. This was set off first what God wanted. When he made Adam and Eve, this is what our rules was. Just like running a red light. Everybody should stop. If I am the only one running red lights, there's something wrong with me. Come on. Or if I can get you to help follow me run red lights, there's something wrong with you. But because of the temptation of sexual immoralities, each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should give to wife her marriage rights and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not, here we go, the wife does not have authority over her own body. But the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body. But the wife does. Do not deprive one another. Okay, let me stop right there. I'm put my finger there. Don't deprive each other. Hey, baby, why don't we come on there? The kids is going to be gone. I don't feel like doing that. You always want to do that at the wrong time. I just don't even know why you want to. I don't have time to be doing that. The kids will be home in two hours. I got to get this done. I get this. Marlene is supposed to be calling me about me doing her hair. I ain't got no time. Don't deprive him like that. You know what? Because somebody across town, you don't cook already. Cook biscuits and don't mind doing it. So, just, so you think about that. Why you deprived him like that? No, you should have broke it down. Said, sweetheart, now nah, I guess can we get a rain check? And I got you, okay? Yeah, sweetie, I'll go in here and go work on the line more or something. Come on. Okay. It said, do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a, a limited time. So we can agree. Can we do it Saturday, sweet? I'm going to rock your world. It may be Thursday. Can we do it Kim? Thursday? I don't have nothing to do. I'm going to give the kids to mama. She want to watch them. And it's going to be me and you. That's what you do. Your wife trying to pull up on you. Sweet, we have, hey, baby. We haven't did it in a long time. Come on. I'll put this on for you tonight. You're supposed to get ready. I don't know what you do. Now, if you're not feeling well, that, that's natural. That's normal. Hey, sweetie, not tonight. I'm so tired. I'm beat up, baby, and I want to perform good for you. Can I get you tomorrow night? Can we have a rain check? Yes, sweetie. Do we need to pray? Let's pray anyway. Lord, we thank you for us being husband and wife. We thank you that you allowed us to come together and have three beautiful children by having sex, and we thank you, and that no devil can come in between us. Let me be feeling good enough tomorrow to take care of my wife in whatever way she needs. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. So I had to give that to you because that's what I've done before. We have do I've done this. I'm not just saying this because, oh, yo, this is what we do. And God go to do it. Spin around three times and God go to do it. No, 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 no. This is real live stuff. I'm not here to entertain you. And I ain't, I ain't collect no offering from you. I don't need all of that. I need your life to change and your soul to change and your mind to be renewed. Because what we're doing nowadays is stupid. And it don't make any sense. It says, uh, uh, deprive one another except perhaps by agreeing a, a limit time that you may devote yourself to prayer. But then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because you have you have lack of self-control. So it is you if you if you if you don't have no self-control, come together and pray. So Satan don't come in there because you don't want Pookie hollering at you at the job and the next thing you know, you sneaking off. Oh, honey, I'll be back. I'm gonna go by, by mama's for a minute, and then you run and turn the corner and go in the hood, and Pookie knock you off being a wife. Cause you're cause you man been depriving her at home, and she ain't been getting none at home, no compliments or nothing, and now we got a problem. 
If you married them, you go all the way like you did before you was, before you was married. Y'all done it everywhere. Come on, people. I'm talking to the church Christian people. Your suit and your suit and got so tight and, and so many called you bishop and now you don't do nothing with your wife. But act like, do you know you got to leave that bishop at home and go home and be a husband to your wife? I wish some women out there would say something. Come on. Drop that robe and get busy. I ain't going to get no help. Come on. This might be the last time I'll be on YouTube. Oh, God. Well, I got to keep it real because it's in here. There's 50... Six thing God talk about kissing and hugging. You got it. Come on, ladies. Come on. When the last time you gave your husband a good juice? I know you've been married 40 years, so you need to smell his breath, you need to smell your breath. Lay it on him. Lay it on her. Keep it juicy. Then it's so healthy for your children. Oh, mama, there they go. They kiss it again. I don't need to see that. Well, you'll see it pretty soon because you're going to be doing it. Come on. That's how you got here. Come on. You're going to grow up. You'll understand. You may not understand it now. You're only 13. I know it look nasty, but you ain't started it yet. One thing about God, he's so bad, all of us been addicted to this drug. Come on. It's sex. God hit everybody with that. I bet you ain't going to get nothing no shot for that because it's in you. Ain't no, ain't no, it's in you. It's built in there. All of us running towards that way. Sex. Come on, talk about it. All right, but God wants us to be able to govern it. Put a murder on it. Hold it down. Chastity belt it. Come on. Don't give up the cow too quick. Though he'll never buy the milk. I love you guys out there. Listen, grab your husband, grab your wife. I'm talking to the married people. And you people that's, that's on the other end, hear what we're saying. These are nuggets. Come on, if that guy don't want to hold your hand and don't never only really, really kiss you, your husband, you better check him. All right, I love you all. You guys be blessed. This part two, I don't know if I have to, maybe you have to do a part three. But listen, your body is no longer your body. That's your husband's body. Let me tell you, men, that is no your body no more. When your wife want to get busy, you got to do everything you can to perform for her. All right? And then here's the thing. Men, this is a secret. Do a lot of foreplay before the date that helps you and your wife. Other words, if the date is uh, it's Wednesday and the date is not till Saturday till the kids go over to grandmama's house, tell her good things on Thursday morning. Honey, I love you this morning. You've been so sweet. What did you do to that macaroni and cheese last night you made? Girl, I thought your mama came on and made that. Call her on a break. Hey, gorgeous. How you doing? What you doing calling me? You don't never call me. Well, I just was thinking about you. I couldn't do another piece of work until I heard your voice, girl. I'll probably get another ticket coming home. You got to do that. That that. I wish the women was out there to just help agree with me. Well, I love you all. I got to go. My time is way up at 20 minutes. I try to be off here about 10 minutes. I love you guys, but we have to speak the truth because we don't want our churches to fail and our youth. Is that good news? If you know somebody and you can help them, help them. I love you all. Be blessed.